All right, everybody, thanks for coming. Last game before we head down under. Uh, but before we begin, Megan has a few words for you. Hi, everybody. Um, first, I want to say thank you to Blacko for allowing me to do this in this way and provide this um, kind of space. Um, you've been very special to me in my whole career. Well, at least since I've known you. I guess the back half of my career has been pretty long. Um, and it's really special to be able to do this with you and have you here with me. Um, it's with a really deep sense of peace and gratitude and excitement that I want to share with you guys. This is going to be my last season, um, my last World Cup and my last NWSL season. Um, obviously, there'll be more to come further down, down the road after hopefully we get done what we want to get done. But um, I just want to say thank you um, to everybody, to you guys, um, to Vlaco, to U.S. Soccer, to, you know, literally everyone that I've played with, um, all of my coaches. I could have just, like, never imagined um, where this beautiful game would have taken me. Um, I feel so honored to be able to have represented this country and this federation for so many years. Um, it's truly been the greatest thing that I've ever done. Um, something I'm so grateful for. And I feel like watching Sue go through her last year, I wanted to say it before. Um, it feels weird, eh, to know and be settled and um, to sort of have to lie by omission about it, but um, I just want to be able to soak in every moment and, you know, share it with teammates and friends and family and, and share it with the, with the rest of the world. And I'm just really grateful to be able to do it in this way. I understand that it is incredibly rare for athletes of any stature to be able to go out in their own way, on their own terms, um, at the time that they want in a way that feels really peaceful and settled for them. So I feel very grateful that I'm, that I'm here and that I have the trust of this team and uh, that my body has held up this long to be able to do this. So just wanted to do it now and honestly kind of get it out of the way before we go down to New Zealand so we can focus on uh, the task at hand, which is winning another World Cup. So thank you. And with that, Vlatko will probably not be answering any questions, but <laughs> he's certainly available if you have a question for Vlatko. Uh, but yeah, questions for Megan or Vlatko. Go ahead, Meg. I mean, I don't even know where to begin, but just in terms of trying to balance the emotion of this moment with knowing that there's a game and that there's a mission tomorrow and then knowing that you have to get on a plane tomorrow night too. Yeah, I would have liked an extra day, but we're in a big rush. Um, I mean, to be honest, I've, I've been thinking about this for a long time. Um, I mean, I think honestly, since, since the you know, final whistle in, in Lyon, that's been sort of a question that I've been grappling with and um, struggling with a lot. Um, but I think over the, the course of you know, the back half of last year and in coming into this season, um, I've talked about it so much. I feel like I processed a lot with Sue and, um, and just her decision to retire over the last couple of years. Um, and I feel like as excited to play the rest of my career as I do to retire and to step away from this beautiful game. So again, I, I know that I'm, I'm really lucky to be in this position that I get to have agency over the end of this really beautiful part of my life. And so in a way, I feel like um, it's a little bit of borrowed time and um, something I feel really grateful for and really excited about. And um, there's sort of no, no distraction at hand because I know what it is to lose in a World Cup final, and I certainly don't want to do that again. So um, the best way that I could possibly go out is, is winning. And so it feels really 
easy to focus and, and easy to put my all into it and easy to be really settled and um, excited for what's, you know, undoubtedly going to be the best World Cup that we've ever seen. Jeff. Megan, congratulations on your decision and your career. Um, a question for you and for Vladko. You're going out with the most diverse women's national team in history with LGBTQ, mothers, uh, you know, ethnic diversity. H how does it feel to have finally gotten the team there? And then Vladko, you know, a naturalized citizen coach, that, that kind of fits into what the, the whole tapestry of the U.S. is all about. Do you feel this team represents the U.S.? Thank you. Yeah, I really do. I, th I think that it's something that our team takes a ton of pride in and something that we've been, um, have really made a point to talk about and to push and, you know, at, at the highest, at the very highest level, you obviously want, you know, the best players that you can possibly get. You're not just trying to check boxes, but that comes with the youth system and from, you know, having out players and from having more black players and, you know, having players that have box braids that are blue and having players that have short hair and having, you know, a diversity in the team so that young kids can actually see that, you know, and, and we have that on our team. We literally have the young kids that saw it that are now on the team um, and we're able to, you know, realize their dream or maybe they didn't always see themselves in the team. Um, I think this team is always represented America and, and a sense of patriotism that kind of flips that term on its head. And we've always, I think, done an incredible job of being willing and using our platform to talk about that and to drive that and to make sure that that's something that everybody knows is incredibly important to this team. But it's also, I feel like, one of the greatest strengths that this team has is that we are all different and we celebrate that difference and we allow ourselves to be our full selves on the field so that, you know, we can go out there and do what we love to do best. So, yeah, I don't know if you want to say anything about it. I mean, what is it to say after this? Uh, what a great answer by, uh, by Pino. Absolutely agree with everything. And all I can say is just personally for me, I'm proud to, uh, to be on the helm of this, uh, this team uh, with everything that this team represents and everything that uh, this team fights for and, uh, um, and uh, leads uh, uh, out off the field. It's just, uh, it's just an honor to, to coach it. Yeah, Megan, this is obviously something you've given a, a lot of thought to. You know, at what point did you realize that uh, this was going to be your final season? And at what point did you realize that this is how you wanted to announce that and go out? Um, God, I've known probably for like a year or something. <laughs> um, I mean, I think just the way the cycles lined up, having this be a World Cup, uh, being a World Cup year and, you know, being able to be in a place, you know, physically that I still feel like I have a lot to contribute. Um, I think kind of at the beginning of, of this year sort of knew that uh, I wanted to play the end of, you know, through the end of this year, obviously hoping to make the World Cup team and, and have one, one last chance at that, um, you know, it was really important to me and something that I really wanted. Uh, yeah, it just, it just feels, feels right. feels like the right time. Um, I have spent a lot of time thinking about it. Again, I feel, and I really, like, know and understand how rare this is for an elite athlete to be able to have agency over the end of their career in a lot of different ways. Um, I wanted to do it, you know, before the World Cup. I wanted to do it on my own terms. I obviously am very thankful to U.S. Soccer and Vlaco for allowing me this sort of um, platform to do it on. But yeah, I, I did want to do it my own way, and I wanted to make sure that it was something that felt good for me and felt good for the people around me. Um, but ultimately, like. It is my career, and it's my words to say, and uh, I just wanted to make sure that I had, you know, the moment to take time and to say what I wanted to say. And um, also, I wanted to do it prior to the World Cup. I think I've been asked like a thousand times, you know, it's like, obviously, I'm not going to be playing the next one. My God, that would be a whole scene. Um, so it felt weird to, to not say it. I want to go into that last one, you know, knowing that for myself and, and having that be out there. So that was important to me also. My question is for Vlaco. Um, how would you describe your working relationship with Kate Markgraf, the GM? And in, in what ways does 
does her job kind of impact your job in managing the team? I mean, the relationship that, that we have, uh, first I would say uh, it's a professional relationship, but also friendship. And uh, it started early on uh, uh, at the very beginning, uh, lots of collaboration, lots of, uh, lots of work together. And uh, obviously uh, she has responsibility as my boss to, to overlook certain things that I do. And uh, I have responsibility as a coach uh, to make certain decisions uh, when it comes down to roster players. Uh, and uh, we have very good understanding, uh, and uh, has been uh, has been great. Uh, it has worked uh, well so far, and I have no doubt it will, it will continue like that. I mean, uh, uh, one thing that uh, uh, I can I can say one thing that I really like is uh, just uh, p uh, positioning certain questions in a way to help us uh, or guide us uh, to make certain uh, some tough decisions. So obviously, being in the, sitting in this seat, uh, we uh, we have to make uh, so many tough decisions uh, in uh, different times, whether it's uh, on the field or off the field. But uh, the questions that uh, that she's posing in such a professional and respectful way help us uh, help us think deeper, help us. Think different and outside of the box and uh, and uh, in a way prepare ourselves for uh, for even uh, more stressful moments uh, and uh, be ready for it. Megan Alex Simon from Bay Area News Group. Reading isn't exactly the Bay Area but you are Northern California to kind of be able to be in NorCal for this match as you're making this announcement. Does that maybe add a little bit more to tomorrow for you in that way? Yeah of course. Um, I have like you know, 40 people <laughs> coming to tomorrow's game. Um, this is the, the closest that I'll ever get to play to Reading in my career. Um, it feels, it does feel very special. It feels kind of perfect. I was hoping, uh, um, you know, to have, you know, every single one of my family members here. Um, my twin sister's not gonna be able to be here, but she'll be down in New Zealand with us. Uh, but yeah, it, it means a lot to be able to do it in the Bay. I mean, it feels like a, a second home. I feel like, you know, from the Bay to Sacramento up to Reading, that, that all feels like home. Um, you know, I grew up playing here um, and playing sort of all over all over this area. Um, that's where, yeah, that's where crazy little Megan got her start. So it feels right to, you know, say that I'm ending it here. Megan, as you near the end of this incredible career, in five, 10, 20 years, what will you remember most? Jesus, Mike. Okay. Um, what will I remember most? Um, I think just like all the moments that are only team, you know, the in the locker room, um, in the mediation rooms, in the bus, in you know the the banquet rooms and hotels, um, the fun moments, the really tough moments, um, all those little things that nobody gets to see. Like one sticking out now is you know Germany 2011 coming back in and there was tarps on the on the lockers um, and just realizing how close you were to that and obviously getting the chance to you know win World Cups after that and needing those tarps uh, desperately to cover up all the stuff in the lockers. Um, I think it's just all those those little moments with all of my teammates throughout the years. I think that's that's something that can never be replicated. You know, there's there's certain things um, in the game that I think you just have to mourn when you walk away. Um, you know, I'm never gonna have a a moment. You know, in that in that Paris stadium like I did you know, four years ago, and there's so many moments like that. I'm never going to have the locker room moments again or, you know, uh, watching my teammates come back from being pregnant or watching people, you know, struggle and be in the depths of shit, like watching myself be in the depths of stuff um, and being able to to come out of it in, in so many ways. So I think it's all all those moments, um, you know, all the, the biggest ones that we know are like memorialized on YouTube and those, <laughs> those can forever be brought up, but um, all the little moments that, that we're not able to share with everyone, I think is the, the most special for all of us. Last couple, go ahead. Uh, hi, Megan, Jackie here with Women Kickballs. Just talking about those memories and those moments that you have, obviously in your career from the USA and then of course international players that you've played with or against. Um, what are just some of the lessons that you've learned from the, some of those players um, when you think about just the lessons that you're taking away from your career? 
one of the the biggest lessons I learned very early on from Christine Lilly was it's hard for everybody. I think we were running, and obviously everyone knows Lil. She could run for days. She probably still outrun all of us to this day. Um, I'm sure I was like, you know, not doing very well and you know, complaining about how hard it was and how easy it looked for her. And she just looked me dead in my face and was like, "It's hard for everyone." That's what that's what I that's what I think. Like, it's everybody struggles in different ways. We're not all going to struggle the same, you know, on the field, off the field, emotionally, mentally, physically, gone through injuries, tough losses, um, you know, dips in form, uh, you know, the heights of form and, and feeling amazing. Um, so I think that right there is like everybody's going through something um, and always showing up and giving everything that you have, and I think demanding that of your teammates as well, knowing that you're not always gonna get the best, but um, just that like all of us are, are in this together. So I think that's one of the biggest lessons. I think the, the other thing that I learned very, very early on is if there's one second on the clock, that's enough time. Um, I've been a part of so many just incredible teams, incredible comebacks or incredible moments um, that like, never say die attitude. Um, there's a few in the room here uh, that know what those inner squad scrimmages were like all those years ago. Um, iron sharpens iron and that's, you know, that's where we learn to be cool, calm and collected when all the cameras are on us in those big stages um, is to do it every day and to bring that. You don't just show up with a championship mentality when it matters. You have to do that every day and cultivate that. So that's something that I learned you know, from the Kate Margraffs and the Shannon Boxes in the room and um, just learning how to be a champion is, is every single day and every single time that you pull on the shirt and every single practice that you go to and every single session that you have on your own. Like, that's why this team is successful. Hi, Megan. When you reflect on the roles that you've played, um, either being heavily involved in, if not at the forefront of, various movements toward justice um, and equality and inclusion in the sport. Uh, I think maybe four years ago, it would have been easy to think that there was one tangible, finite destination that people were working toward in terms of equality and equity. I'm wondering if you still think that's true or if you think that part of being a, women, a woman or um, non-binary person who plays women's soccer involves a constant fight and that it will always be a constant fight, that there will always be a new thing to fight for. Is that just part of the job or do you think that there is still a place and a time at which we might reach um, equality? I always believe there's a, a time and a place. I think it could come right now, today, if, um, you know, if everybody believed that. So I definitely wanna, wanna make that clear. I, I don't want to be fighting the way that we are and I, I don't think it's, uh, we don't, you know, it, it shouldn't be necessary, but in in so many ways it is. And so I think that is very much in the fabric of the landscape around, you know, female athletics as a very inclusive term, whether it be in, in the W or in college basketball or, uh, you know, the NWSL and, and sort of around the world. I, I think the the goal... What I see as the goal for us is, is not the comparison or an arrival point because that's just a constant comparison to men's sports and that goalpost will just always be moved. But I think for us, it's understanding that nothing ever stays the same and you have to be in constant motion and in constant progress. As soon as we know one thing, we have more knowledge to know something else and then uh, you know, uh, an opportunity to continue to be better, to bring more people in, to make more space for people to be their full selves. So I think that's something that's so unique and powerful about women's sports and just the landscape around women's sports that the, what's happening on the field is, is always just as important as what's happening off. I think we have shown that we have the power to change the world in so many ways. I think we've seen the world change around us. The more that we use our voice and create space for ourselves, we're always creating space for other people also. So I think our goal, I mean, certainly, obviously, the, the 
you know, the obvious markers of attendance and investment and ticket sales, all of that. But I think our like ultimate mission is to just keep evolving and keep progressing and keep throwing our ladders down and bringing as many people along with us as we possibly can because we have a very different and unique business product than anywhere that exists in, in the whole world. And it's really this sort of intricate web of, of you know, global alliances and all different leagues and teams and sports and, and women all over the world. So I think that's kind of the goal is to use this to make the world a better place. I mean, I, I've said that a lot. Um, and sometimes it feels corny, but I feel like we all have a responsibility to make the world a better place in whatever way that we can be most pack, impactful in doing that. And we have an opportunity in this sport, all of us, you know, from you guys to us to, you know, coaches and media people and everyone involved to use this as our special tool to make the world a better place in some kind of way. And with that, we will end it. Oh, please. Thank you, everybody.